Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to start our discussion of carbohydrates, of sugars, otherwise known as saccharides. Uh, today we're going to talk about monosaccharides. Um, absolutely fantastic, fascinating area of biochemistry. Um, I personally, I can't decide which is more exciting. I love proteins and then when we start doing sugars, you know, carbohydrates, I love carbohydrate chemist, uh, chemistry, and then when we, when we talk about lipids, when we talk about enzymes, uh, it's all just, each area is more fascinating than the next. And it's amazing when all of this starts to come together. So anyway, let's just jump right on in and see what we can do. I have to warn you, uh, there are going to be lots of structures being written out. And again, I don't use pictures. I like to draw everything out. My recommendation, again, I can't stress it enough, especially for carbohydrates, uh, because you have lots of carbons and lots of hydroxies. Um, it's one thing to be able to look at an illustration, and by all means, you definitely want to use your book. Your book has fantastic illustrations of most of these things that I'm going to be drawing, but being able to say, yes, I can see what's going on is very different from being able to actually produce what's going on with your hand. You want to draw these things out as many as possible. And you'll discover that just by the time you draw your fifth or sixth one, you have a really, really good command of this structure. So by all means, pictures are great, illustrations are great, but you have to be able to do it with pencil and paper. You have to be able to do it with your hand. Okay. Enough said, let's jump on in. And hopefully I don't make mistakes because again, there's a lots of carbons and oxygens and hydrogens are gonna be floating around. Okay, so monosaccharides. Well, so let's talk about carbohydrates first in general. Uh, so carbohydrates are nothing more Then aldehydes and ketones, oops, nothing more than aldehydes and ketones with several hydroxy groups attached to the carbons, with several hydroxy groups attached to the non-carbonyl carbons. That's it. To the non-carbonyl carbons. Or carbohydrates yield these things. They yield these aldehydes and ketones upon hydrolysis, upon hydrolysis. So do you remember in the um, lesson when we did the example problems for peptides and proteins, we talked about glucagon and we talked about how it induces the liver to actually uh, break up glycogen to release free glucose into the blood? Well, glycogen is a carbohydrate when you hydrolyze it when the liver hydrolyzes it, it actually releases free glucose, which is the monosaccharide. So carbohydrate is just that. It's either the um, monosaccharide itself or the aldehyde or ketone, or it produces those things when you've actually hydrolyzed it. So that's all a carbohydrate is. It's either an aldehyde or a ketone that has a bunch of OH groups attached to the other carbons. And you'll see the structures in just a second. Okay, so most carbohydrates, most carbohydrates have the empirical formula CH2O. Well, that's where the, the name comes from, carbohydrate. Hydrate for the H2O, um, carbo for the C. So that's the empirical formula. Now some carbs, I'll just call them carbs, contain nitrogen, sulfur, or phosphorus. Okay. Now there are three major classes, if you want to call them that. I mean, probably not necessary, but 
we tend to break them up like this, there are three major classes of carbohydrates. We have the monosaccharides, which we're going to talk about today. Monosaccharides, and saccharide just means sugar. Monosaccharides. The oligosaccharides, and the polysaccharides, saccharides, Ooh, long words. So saccharide just means sugar. Mono means one sugar unit, oligo means a few sugar units, and poly means a whole lot of sugar units attached to each other. Okay, so monosacs. Monosacs are the simple sugars. Are the simple sugars and consist of single aldehydes and ketones. with those additional hydroxy groups attached to the carbons that are non, the non-carbonyl OH groups. Attached to the non-carbonyl carbon. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw some structures out. Let's do some examples. So examples of monosaccharides, I'm going to do a lot of these. Okay, there's going to be lots of structures. I want you to see them over and over again until they're just completely natural for you. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's go ahead and do blue because I like blue. So we have examples of monosacs and these are going to be the, I'm going to do the aldehydes first and they're called aldoses. Aldose, the O-S-E, that just means uh, carbohydrate, sugar, that's the, sh the ending. Uh, glucose, mannose, galactose, they all end in O-S-E. So aldose means all the sugars that are aldehydes, so that's a broad class. So examples of monosacs. So the first one I'm going to do is one that you've already seen before. It's three carbons. I'll do the aldehyde group up here, and I think I'll put the H on, uh, that's fine, I'll go ahead and put the H on this side, CH2OH, and I will do the OH on this side, and H. So this is three carbons, this is the D-glyceraldehyde, you've seen this one before. So D-glyceraldehyde. Remember when we were talking about protein configuration? L-glyceraldehyde, D-glyceraldehyde. Remember the L-glyceraldehyde had the hydroxide on the left. The D-glyceraldehyde has the hydroxide on the right. That's it. D-glyceraldehyde. It is a three-carbon sugar because it has three carbons. The carbonyl carbon is the first. This is the second. This is the third. Notice hydroxy attached to the second carbon, hydroxy attached to the third carbon. Also notice that this one has four different groups attached to it, so this carbon is actually a chiral carbon center. But we know that already because of the glyceraldehyde. We have a D, we have an L. Those are the enantiomers of, D -glyce of glyceraldehyde, the D and the L. Okay, so that is a three carbon sugar. Well, let's go ahead and do this one. Let's do C, O, H. Oops, let me draw the backbone first. Always a good idea. H2OH, do the aldehyde first, do the last one, put the H2OH on there, and now just go ahead and attach the hydroxies. A hydroxy over here and a hydroxy over here. We'll put an H, we'll put an H, and this is D erythros. And again, these are just examples. You don't have to know all of these. There's only a couple that you're going to have to know. Probably, well, you're certainly going to have to know the glucose and maybe galactose and mannose, but don't worry about that. Just want you to get comfortable with what's going on here and how these are drawn. This is a four carbon sugar. One, two, three, four. Hydroxy, 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 attached to the non-carbonyl. 
This is the aldehyde group. The carbon double bonded to the oxygen, hydrogen. Carbon double bonded oxygen, hydrogen. That's it. Nothing, nothing actually changes. The chain just gets longer. That's all that's going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a, uh, this is one, two, three, four. Let's do a five carbon sugar. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, and five. I go ahead and put my aldehyde group up there. I go ahead and put my that down here. And then I go OH, OH, and OH. This is D ribose. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, this is D ribose. D ribose. This is a five carbon sugar. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a six carbon sugar. Probably our most important one. Well, not probably, our most important one. Okay. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and put the H's here. Um, if I ever, and again, if you ever see a carbon that is missing a bond, that has only, you, the, the last bond is going to be an H. Uh, sometimes I forget the H's, sometimes I don't. Um, uh, anyway. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let me put the aldehyde group up there. Let me put my H2OH up here. Now glucose happens to be OH here, OH here, OH here, and OH here. So this is D-glucose. This is a six carbon sugar. Okay, 